Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on uh, the gastrointestinal tract. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the histology of the stomach wall. Okay, so we'll start off by discussing uh, very basically the structure of the stomach. Okay, and then we'll discuss the histology of the stomach wall, so the microanatomy uh, of the stomach wall. Okay, right, so. Let's firstly start off with a bit of basic anatomy then. So the stomach is the uh, first organ after the esophagus, okay? So it precedes the small intestine. So here comes the esophagus down like so, okay? And then the stomach comes off like so. Okay, and there's a sphincter at the end of the esophagus before you go into the stomach known as the gastroesophageal sphincter, but we'll show that in a moment. Okay, and then the stomach curves round like so. Okay, and then it uh, goes into the small bowel here, and then there's a sphincter between the stomach and the beginning of the small bowel, and the first portion of the small bowel is called the duodenum, and that sphincter is known as the pyloric sphincter. Okay, so here it is. This is the pyloric sphincter, or just the pylorus. Okay. And we also said there was a sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach up here, okay? And this is called the gastroesophageal sphincter, okay? So gastro means pertaining to the stomach. Uh, esophageal obviously means pertaining to uh, the esophagus, okay? And then it's the gastroesophageal sphincter. So it's just a thickening of the uh, circular muscle that can constrict and therefore close off the gap between the esophagus and the stomach. Okay, so what we're now going to do is have a look at the structure of the stomach wall, basically. So we're going to take a little piece of the stomach wall out and have a look at its microstructure. Okay, right. So basically, uh, the stomach wall is a gland. It secretes a huge amount of gastric juice, okay? So each day, the stomach wall is going to produce 2.5 litres of gastric juice, okay? So that's every day. Now, what's in this gastric juice? Well, firstly, the gastric juice is going to contain a lot of hydrochloric acid, okay? But it also contains things such as intrinsic factor, and then also uh, the precursors to the enzymes, which will break down uh, the contents of the stomach. And the main thing that you have within the stomach, the well, the main things that are going to act in the stomach are um, proteases, okay? So you have uh, the important protease pepsin within the stomach. Uh, also, infants have the um, protease uh, renin, okay? I know renin is usually associated with something in the stomach of cows, uh, but human infants do actually have renin themselves. Okay, so 2.5 litres of gastric juice. Right, okay, and we want to look at the structure which actually makes all of this gastric juice. Okay, so we'll start from the innermost portion here. So we'll start from the luminal side. So the cavity within the stomach is known as the um, gastric lumen. Okay, we'll start from the luminal side and we'll work our way out. So basically, the stomach has a huge number of what are known as gastric pits. Okay, so all over the stomach you'll have a little pits, basically. So if you're a little man standing in the stomach, you will, and you're looking at the lining, basically what you will see is, um, I'll just draw it here, if you're a little man looking at the surface, okay, so you're standing in the gastric lumen, and you're looking over at um, the um, luminal side of the gastric wall, what you'll see is pits all over the place. So you'll see holes in the surface all over the place. So now what we're going to do is take a cross section of this and look at it as though we're now looking from this sort of aspect. So we've imagined that we've cut through there and we're now looking at what actually these pits are. Okay, so what will happen? is all of a sudden you'll have a gastric pit like so. So the surface will suddenly uh, invaginate inwards. And in these gastric pits, what you then have are coming off them, you have little further invaginations which are called gastric glands. Okay, so let me just draw this out and then I'll explain it in a bit more detail. Okay, right. So this is the surface here. So these portions 
this portion in pink and this portion in pink, those are analogous to this portion and this portion. Okay, and then we've got this pit, this gastric pit in the middle here. So this hole here, okay, so let me highlight, not in another purple, okay, so in turquoise here, this portion here, this is the gastric pit. Okay, so in turquoise, this is the gastric pit. Okay, and then coming off the gastric pit, you have further invaginations inwards. So let's colour these in. So these portions in blue down here, one, two, like these, these are the gastric glands. And I'm going to have to be careful about where I label things up because I'm going to be drawing more structure down here so it doesn't just end with this. Okay, so I'm going to have to be careful where I label. I'm easily going to run out of space for labelling things. Okay, so this is a gastric gland. Now, of course, I've drawn these cells as though they don't have a thickness, so what I want to now do is correct my drawing by giving these cells an actual thickness. So I'm now drawing the bottom of these cells, okay? Like so. So this other line represents the bottom of the cells. So the line that I drew initially represents the top of the cells, and now I'm drawing the bottom of the cells. So these are the cells which actually line uh, the gastric pit, the gastric glands, and also the uh, lumen of the stomach up here. All right, so let me now separate them out. Okay, so these are mainly columnar epithelial cells, but in the gastric glands particularly, we're going to have some special types of cells down here. Okay, so we'll see these in a moment. Right. Okay, so I'll just divide up all of these cells. So the main type of epithelium that you have within all of the uh, gastrointestinal tract is columnar epithelium, and this is certainly true uh, within the stomach. And it's also a simple columnar epithelium. Okay, so these are epithelial cells, and they are columnar epithelial cells. And these ones that are actually on the surface, that are, aren't within the gastric pit, these are called surface columnar epithelial cells, okay? And it's a simple columnar epithelium because um, it's only a single layer, basically. So whenever someone calls an epithelium simple, it means that it only has one layer of cells. So every single cell is in contact with the basement membrane that it's sitting on, which I'll show in a moment. So this is a surface columnar epithelial cell. Okay, now all of these epithelial cells are sitting on a basement membrane which is mainly made up of collagen but has other proteins such as laminins and fibrillins in it as well. So I'll draw this basement membrane here. Okay, so it is underneath all of these epithelial cells, like so. Okay, and the meaning of saying that it's a simple uh, epithelium is that every single epithelial cell sits on the basement membrane. It has a contact with the basement membrane. Okay, so in turquoise here, and the arrows are going to have to be quite long now so that I can put the labels over here. This is a basement membrane uh, that all of these epithelial cells are sitting on. Okay, now most of these cells are columnar epithelial cells, although dotted around the place we're going to have special cells. Okay, now what do these columnar epithelial cells do? Well, basically they secrete mucus, okay? So all of these cells can produce mucus, okay? And this is very, very important because uh, cells that we're going to see later called parietal cells, which are going to be down here at the sort of entrances to the uh, gastric glands, uh, these are going to be secreting hydrochloric acid, okay, which will go into the lumen of the stomach. And you probably know that the pH of the stomach lumen is very low, okay? So the pH of the stomach lumen is around 1 to 2, okay, which is very, very low. So it's a very, very acidic environment. Okay, so remember, as you become more and more acidic, the pH goes down and down and down and down. Okay, um, so do the epithelial cells want to be exposed to uh, a pH of 1 to 2? Of course not. So this mucus that they're going to secrete onto their surface is for their own protection, basically. It's to protect the wall of the stomach from the horrible, horrible pH that is within the lumen of the stomach. Now, why do we have that 
incredibly high pH. Well, firstly, uh, it's to, as a part of the innate immune system. Basically, if any bacteria come down into the stomach, they're going to get annihilated by a pH of 1 to 2. Okay, so it's to kill bacteria that are coming down into the lumen of the stomach. In addition, it's also the opt optimal pH for the protease enzymes to function, basically, which are going to digest the proteins within the uh, food that we consume. Okay, so these surface columnar epithelial cells are going to be secreting mucus onto their surface, and not just the surface columnar cells, all of the columnar epithelial cells, and you've got many columnar epithelial cells in the gastric pit and also into the gastric glands, okay? And in addition, what will they also be secreting in this mucus? Well, they're going to secrete something that helps to keep the pH uh, of um, the mucus high, basically. Helps to neutralize the acidic uh, environment that the mucus will be in contact with. So basically, into the mucus, what these uh, epithelial cells put is bicarbonate anions. Okay, and bicarbonate... Uh, anions are very good bases. Okay, so bicarbonate. So let me show you the structure of a bicarbonate anion. Okay, so the bicarbonate anion has this chemical formula, HCO3. And the structure is like so. You have a carbon atom at the center, and it's got an oxygen atom double bound to it. Okay, and it's got two oxygen atoms which are single bound to it. Now, one of them then has a hydrogen coming off, and the other has to acquire its final electron via ionic means and therefore ends up with a negative charge. Okay, so remember, oxygen has six outer shell electrons, so it needs to gain two more. One of them it gains via this covalent bond with the carbon. Okay, so the oxygen puts one electron into this bond, the carbon puts another in, and effectively the oxygen gains that carbon's uh, electron that it's put in. So that takes you up to seven, but it needs eight. So it has to acquire another one via ionic means, okay, uh, to take it up to eight, and that, uh, that leads to it having this negative charge. Now, why is this molecule such a fantastic base? Well, the definition of a base is a molecule which can accept protons. Protons have a positive charge, okay? So protons are usually hydrogen nuclei, okay? Uh, so they can come and associate with the negative charge here, and they will form a covalent bond with the oxygen, okay, to produce um, this molecule here, okay? H2CO3, okay, which is a carbonic acid, okay? So this is carbonic acid. Okay, so H2CO3. Right, okay, uh, so that's why these are fantastic bases, why they can mop up protons, basically. So if you've got protons coming into the mucus, because it's full of the bicarbonate, the bicarbonate can accept the protons, and that will help to keep the free proton concentration, i.e. the number of protons that are free in the solution, which is what the pH is based on. The pH is a measure of the free protons, not just all the protons that are in the solution, because, you know, you'd have to add up all the protons in every single atom. No, of course not. It's the measure of the free protons. So if you're mopping up these protons, uh, then um, you're reducing uh, the uh, free protons, and therefore you're increasing the pH, you're reducing the acidity. Okay, so uh, these measures help to keep the pH of um, the mucus uh, which is what's in contact with the epithelial cells at between 6 and 7, which is much more tolerable, basically. Okay, so the mucus is there to protect uh, the columnar epithelial cells. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's continue with our discussion of the structure of the uh, stomach wall, then. Okay, so we've discussed these uh, columnar epithelial cells, and you'll have surface columnar epithelial cells. You'll then have epithelial cells going into uh, the gastric pit. Okay, now in the gastric glands down here, you'll also have some columnar epithelial cells, but you'll also have a bunch of other important cells. Okay, some different, more interesting types of cells. Okay, so we'll start with cells that are right at the bottom of the gastric pit. Okay, so these ones in orange are cells that are right at the bottom of the gastric pit. And these cells in orange 
are called G cells. Okay, so you have G cells right at the bottom of the gastric pits, and these basically secrete gastrin. Okay, and when in the next video, when we look at uh, the um, control of the acidity of the stomach, the control of acid secretion by the stomach, we will discuss gastrin in more detail. Okay, uh, so the G cells for now, all we need to know about them is that they secrete gastrin. Okay, so now let's have a look at cell, other special cells that you have within the gastric glands. Okay, so the next ones that we, I want to talk about are uh, the chief cells, which are also called the peptic cells. Now, these are still very much so at the bottom of the gastric glands, but they're not quite as much at the bottom as the G cells. The G cells are right at the bottom, but these are near to the bottom. Okay, so these ones in pink, these are the chief cells. Okay, now chief cells are also known as peptic cells. So I'll put chief forward slash peptic, because you can use either term. Okay, right, so these are the cells which secrete um, the precursors to the active enzymes which are going to break down the proteins. So these cells secrete precursors to proteases. Now, which two proteases uh, do they produce? Well, I'll put this right down here, I think. Uh, so, uh, they produce the precursor to pepsin, which is pepsinogen. Okay, so pepsin is an extremely important protease in the adult stomach. And in infants, they also produce uh, pro-renin. Okay, and as I said, uh, renin is something you usually think about in the stomach of cows, and it's something that used to be used in the production of cheese. It isn't anymore. Cheese is suitable for vegetarians. Um, but um, it is found in human infants as well. The chief peptic cells do, uh, chief forward slash peptic cells uh, of human infants do produce pro renin. And obviously, pepsinogen will be converted to pepsin. Pro-renin will be converted to renin, and uh, there, those two enzymes, pepsin and renin, are both proteases. Okay, also note, this is pronounced renin, not renin, okay? Um, and it's got the double N as well, okay? Do not confuse it with uh, the single N, renin, here, which is part of the uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. That's nothing to do with what we're talking about now. Renin is an enzyme which breaks down uh, proteins. Uh, renin is uh, an important enzyme for controlling uh, blood volume. Right, uh, okay, so uh, what we now want to talk about is the next cells up, which are the parietal oxyntic cells. So what colour shall I do these? And I'll do them in red. So these are right up near the entrance to the gastric glands. So we'll have these up here. Okay, like so. So they're near up, near the entrance to the gastric glands. Okay, and these cells are known as parietal cells. And I'll put that label right down here. I'll try and colour code it as much as possible. Parietal cells. Okay, and their other name is oxyntic cells. Okay, so they're also called, uh, wait, what am I doing here? Oxyntic, that should be. I was about to write oxygen, just um, out of habit. Oxyntic cells. Okay, right. Uh, so these parietal cells slash oxyntic cells are near the entrance to the gastric glands. Now, what do they secrete? Well, they secrete two things of importance. Firstly, they produce the hydrochloric acid. So they secrete hydrochloric acid into the uh, lumen of the stomach. Okay, so they're responsible for the very low pH of the um, lumen of the stomach. And they also secrete something called intrinsic factor, okay, which is important for the correct absorption of vitamin B12, which is also called cobalamin. Okay, right. Uh, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.